Hello, my name is Judith Polgar, and I would like to welcome all of you who are here again to look at some great studies. And uh, I have a very special guest to introduce shortly, who is an international master over the board chess, but grandmaster in composing. He has incredible things. He's extremely unique as during his career of 55 years, he was playing competitive chess, but at the same time, composing parallel. So he's very unique and special. So please welcome uh, Johanan Afek here from Israel, but he stays and lives in Holland for quite some time already. Hello. Hi, hello. Well, you were one of the exceptionally famous and good composers who took part, and I'm very happy for this, at the Chess Artistry Competition, which is part of the Global Chess Festival of 2021. And I specially designed this event in memory of Paul Banco, who was a good friend and the coach of me also. So this is very special for me that you and also many of the greatest composers were sending in their fantastic comp uh, compositions and we nearly got received 50 of them and one is nicer than the other one and um, so i would like to ask you that this exact uh, composition which you're going to be showing you were doing together with aaron kochler and uh, how someone is doing compositions when you're teaming up with someone uh, there is more than one way to do it. Uh, I remember uh, when I was young in the youth uh, center, center of Tel Aviv, uh, there were other people interested in uh, composing, other juniors like me, because uh, we were studying uh, chess uh, with uh, the famous Israeli <coughs> champion uh, Moshe Cherniak. He was our uh, mentor in chess. and. Uh, uh, he always uh, used to, uh, in every meeting, every lesson, he used to show some endgame studies, especially miniatures, and we, uh, many of us were attracted to it. So in those days, we we tried to compose while in, in the club meetings, like uh, sitting with each other and exchanging ideas, getting en enthusiastic about uh, uh, the other, uh, uh, the partner's idea during during the meeting in the club, because the meeting in the club was not only the lessons, but it was uh, also uh, uh, just a club. And uh, and I'm doing it sometimes, uh, but uh, my uh, uh, regular partners are living in Israel, so I'm uh, more more doing it uh, via uh, email. Uh, we are exchanging ideas via emails. They have their own basic ideas usually and i try to develop it and uh, then i send it to them and they give their own opinion and uh, additional uh, content and that's how it's built up usually yeah uh, and uh, i think most uh, joint studies are composed this way by exchanging ideas uh, and uh, just uh, trying to improve the basic scheme to a final uh, uh, worthy pro product. Yeah. And uh, this study, did you start it out of scratch when uh, we were sending the invitation out and uh, uh, inviting people to this uh, competition in the beginning of May, or you had this idea already beforehand? I uh, we had this. Uh, I had this. We had this because I have a. Uh, a partner uh, to this uh, creation is not a is not a kind of a professional uh, composer, but is uh, more of a chess player. That uh, sometimes when and that happens quite uh, often with players that while they are analyzing, even strong players, uh, I get from grandmasters sometimes uh, ideas they have seen during their analysis of over the board games either their own games or they analyze it for uh, periodicals for the informant so they get this idea they they are getting enthusiastic but not always the ideas are uh, study like ideas 
they are uh, accurate uh, maneuvers and uh, but no but for uh, having it uh, 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 an idea for a study it has to involve some paradox something unusual not only uh, a collection of accurate moves and only moves uh, also it has to have uh, uh, something original some idea that uh, one way or another refutes the basic principle of chess and that's what makes it uh, kind of uh, artistic and uh, surprising and uh, uh, so uh, if you if we refer to this study uh, i had a, a preliminary idea from a dutch player uh, uh, master called aran aran Köhler, whom i know for many many years even before i came to live here and uh, uh, he just uh, was analyzing a position from even not from his game but somebody else's game and came to and found out uh, himself and by the end, uh, help of the engines uh, some uh, quite uh, interesting and fascinating ideas and I uh, took it as a basic uh, scheme for creating this uh, study. I would like to add that it was important for me to take part in this uh, event because I knew uh, Paul Benko personally. I met him a couple of times. He was a great composer, a great player, which is well known that he was a world leading player. And uh, I, um, uh, I also took part earlier in his both 80s and 90s birthday composing special composing tourneys even my studies were awarded i wanted to keep the tradition like this uh, and i was happy that uh, a memorial tourney was organized uh, for him as deserved and, and a successful one uh, with a with a very good organizer and a very good arbit uh, it's called judge in in chess composition and it's a very good judge like john nunn and uh, and uh, I'm glad that uh, uh, it was found uh, uh, worthy for uh, awarding in the in the final uh, award of the judge. Absolutely, as uh, John Nunn, the judge, was awarding it to the third prize, and uh, I also like it very much because of it. Uh, its uniqueness for different reasons, and we're going to talk about this, but also because it's a very much a position which can happen any day. It uh, it can stand on the board for amateurs or for uh, for world championship match even. But before we go to the chess board, can you tell me that what is what is it that really keeps you going for 55 years? of creating and composing studies of your own alone or joining with the others what is the the flow why do you have this passion what keeps you moving and going and creating further and further so in general i have a passion for chess uh, because i'm uh, in, in the last five, 55 years it was my main and uh, perhaps the only profession uh, and I have been doing uh, things in all facets of chess, uh, organizing also and uh, uh, training at all levels and, uh, and uh, mainly writing chess books and uh, chess uh, articles, numerous of them. And, and I found out and other people found out that I'm uh, especially excelling in composing uh, from all those facets in chess. Uh, composing uh, tend to be my strongest uh, uh, one and and when you are good in something then you have the motivation and the passion to keep on doing it this is my way to express my chess feelings and my chess uh, ideas uh, and uh, i'm glad that it is uh, still uh, uh, it is still uh, there and uh, hope for many more years to to do that well, I also do hope because many of your studies, which I've seen, they are so much, it's very pure, clean. The ideas are really implemented in such a perfectionist way that it, it just, for everybody, it's so clear and understandable 
not necessarily long even, but the patterns and the ideas behind it, it's just nice to understand it and explain it. So let's get out the chessboard and see this third prize of your collaboration with Aaron Kochler. And in this position, we can say that white should be much better and white is close to winning in principle if we talk about material because a bishop and three pawns many times should be winning in an endgame, especially when you have your pawns on a6 and on c6. But in this position, it seems that black might be just controlling those pawns with the king and black will be able to gain one of the pawns possibly with, by playing rook a3, for example. So let's see how it starts in this position. Bishop g4 check. Right now, black has two alternatives, right? Because black has to be careful seeing, has to have three eyes, right? The C pawn, the A pawn, and the G pawn is uh, wants to queen eventually. So let's see the first alternative if black goes to king C7. And the idea is behind bishop G4 to regroup the bishop to D7 and to defend the pawn from the back to C6. And somehow the very simple idea is to play G4 four g5 g6 and queen the pawn until the black rook is busy to capturing the a pawn so how would it go rook g3 stops for the moment the g pawn right but there is another one going on a7 so there is something to sacrifice black has to stop from queening the a pawn after that g4 takes g5 and practically black just simply cannot stop the pawn push and the game will be over. The reason is because just to show it for a little further, after rook h1, king g6, rook g1, white goes either h6 or f6, and after that, again, a very nice way. Well, I don't know if we can call this a switchback, but definitely covers the rook, rook power and the g8 queen is queening next. It's okay, absolutely. so this was the first... It no, is a switchback, right? It is a switchback, yeah. Okay, so let's see how black can uh, try to hold the game and resist more. So black goes to king to d8, getting a little bit closer to the g file. After this, white continues bishop d7. Obviously, if someone found bishop g4, he's going to go bishop d7 because it's just stabilizing the situation. Still, c6 pawn is not going to be attacked. And, of course, white's aim is still the same, somehow to queen the g-pawn. But, of course, black is not going to be ignoring this. So he's going to go rook, a th rook g3, a7, rook a3. And we're going to see shortly what is the difference between the king standing on d8 instead of having it on c8, c7 before. Rook a7, g5. Right now, the king already can go nearer by playing king e7 which will be the main line but let's see what other options there are in this position for example if black goes rook a5 then very interesting that g6 for example would be draw immediately because there is a saving idea by black giving a check and now we see the idea behind king d8 that he can stop the all the actions by white by playing king e7 and somehow the white king is stuck and also the c pawn cannot be pushed because then the d7 bishop is under attack. So this is actually already a very nice uh, a practical idea which can happen, right? But let's see how what happens if there is an other way. So after rook a5, g6 was a draw, but there is this very finesse move, king h6 just not pushing the pawn yet, but coming back with the king to h6, covering the h5 square, so in the next move already white will be able to be pushing his pawn. And this g pawn and the c pawn together will be not possible for black to be stopped. But let's see if after g5, so he switches the, the moves and he goes king e7 immediately. Right now, white has to obviously continue g6. I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. 
No, no, no. King e7, white goes g6, rook a1. So black is trying to make a draw by, uh, by if white would be going g7, then black goes rook h1, I think. King g6, rook g1, king h6, and I believe king f7. Is that correct? Yes. No, yes. you give it check first. And only after king g5, black would be going king f7, capturing the pawn on c7, and after c, uh, g7, and after c7, black can go rook c1. So both pawns will be lost, and uh, well, black is just sacrificing his rook for the pawn. So this is not possible, but then we may ask ourselves that, after all, is it a draw? So I would ask you, uh, Johanan, that uh, can you please explain what kind of uh, typical, uh, or not typical, but a special themes are uh, visualized and implemented into this study? Yeah, so uh, in addition to the normal chess uh, tactical and strategical motives that we can uh, recognize here, uh, every player can recognize. There are also two themes more specific to the art of chess composition, uh, not only to endgame studies, but also to mate problems. And uh, one of them is the full march of the pawn from the initial square G2 all the way, all the tough way to the uh, promotion on the eighth rank. Uh, this uh, theme is called, uh, uh, is first shown, was first shown, first introduced by the famous American composer Samuel Lloyd in the 19th century, uh, end of 19th century. He created the first problem, made in five problem, that uh, showed this maneuver uh, a maneuver that is uh, being uh, played uh, almost one move after the other, and is called. Uh, he called it uh, Excelsior. Excelsior. He called it uh, as the name of a famous poem of the American poet Longfellow. Uh, as uh, Excelsior is an old word in English that means ever higher. So the poem goes ever higher despite all the difficulties on its way all the way to promotion and all this uh, this journey this uh, courageous journey is uh, is called excelsior it is uh, something that is uh, uh, pretty special <clears throat> because of the technical problems but uh, is it has become a common theme the other theme we see here is uh, carried out, uh, is, uh, is played on the board by the bishop. The bishop is uh, creating the maneuver bishop from f3, the initial square of the bishop, to g4, and then to d7, both to protect the pawn on c6 and also protect the, the bishop itself. Um, and uh, then later in the solution, this bishop, as we will see soon, is uh, going uh, back to g4 and then to f3 and uh, rounding up the maneuver, which is called Rundlauf. The German term is the term in, uh, in uh, the terminology of chess composition. Uh, it means a round trip from f3 through g4 to d7 and back to g4 and f3 and then continues to some other destinations uh, as we are going to see. Okay, so this is quite a special uh, theme, I think, really this round trip, and I like it very much. I didn't know it before that this exists. Black goes rook h1. Now again, white can make a mistake. And the next move is, to tell you the truth, is very natural, right? Because white wants to be queening his pawn as fast as possible. 
So this is the reason why white goes king g8, because if king g7, then black would be going rook c1, and if white would be going back to repeat and then win the game, already it would be not possible because of rook c4. But we are going to see similar defense against king g8, but it's not going to be a real defense anymore. Because right now there are several options for black to defend. So let's see first what happens if rook c1 is played anyway. Then white is going to be playing g7. And after rook c4 trying to push away the bishop, white can play c7. And after taking, again, white has to be very precise by playing king h8. And in the next move, nothing can stop white from queening on g8. So this was uh, the idea if rook c1, but king d6 is the main move in this position. So let's see how it goes all the way with white towards the winning idea. So white goes g7 now, and uh, black cannot take the c6 pawn because white can simply go bishop f3, check the rook. This is why black plays rook g1, immediately starts to chase the bishop, which, as you pointed out before, is not protected anymore. So white has to look for some kind of shelter or some kind of opportunity to put it in safety and only after that to focus to queen one of the pawns. And it's also very important to protect the c6 pawn right now. This is why the round trip is completed by playing bishop f3. But the bishop is not protected, so black is going to be continuing to chase the bishop, right, on f3, by rook g3. And right now, again, white has to play the only winning move. And to tell you the truth, it's not obvious to me at all, because you may think that, okay, what's the difference between going bishop d5, bishop e4, or bishop h1? And there is a huge difference, because the only winning move is bishop e4, as after bishop d5, black goes king e7. And let's see why is it the difference between the bishop standing. So the winning move is bishop e4. Let's see, rook g4. And right now, there is an other exceptionally important move. So bishop is going one at a time continuously. And now white goes bishop d5 sacrifices the bishop and supporting its g7 pawn so right now if black would take on d5 then white is already going c7 and after rook c4 white's only move again only king f8 wins because if white goes king h8 then black is not going to capture it but playing check first and then white has to be going back again so this would be only a repetition, and white cannot go to the seventh rank with the king because after rook c7, it would be uh, taking the g7 pawn. So this is why king f8 is the only winning move. And after rook c7, right now g8, queens with a check, which is so important, right? Because if it wouldn't be checked, then rook c8 would win the queen and it would be a draw. So after bishop d5, king d5 was not possible, so black is trying to get closer again back to the pawn to go to e7. But now already white can come out with his king. The final phase of the study is going to be accomplished now. Black must go give it check, king g6, rook g4, king h6, trying to come after a check on h4, white would be just moving back with his king, but there is still some small hope for black by playing king f6, right? And this is also, probably it has a special name that in this study we have few different kind of promotion. We just seen the previous one where it was a check by making a queen, but right now it will be also a check because queen is not possible because rook h4 mate. This is why the key move is g8 knight. And after king e5, white is already ready to push the pawn and win the game. It's a 17 move pair of moves study, which is quite amazing. Um, how was it for you that you really 
from the beginning until the end, what is the feeling when you feel that it's done? This there is nothing to prove on that. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to mention the the format of this uh, study is called miniature. Miniature is a is a position in any chess composition genre with not more than seven pieces on the board, and it is a kind of uh, the magic number seven pieces is not too little to create uh, interesting and special ideas and not too much uh, from the uh, material point of view. So this is a miniature that uh, as the judge, uh, John Nan, uh, mentioned in his commentary that it uh, um, contains much content for such a little material. And that is also uh, where the limit is. Uh, the limit is that uh, with so little material, I have the I had the feeling, uh, based on uh, 55 years of experience, that uh, it is done. It is, uh, if I am not wrong, it is 17 moves, 16 or 17 moves. The the solution is long is long enough, and uh, and uh, so many. Uh, uh, ideas and sub ideas are in, uh, included the the uh, switchback the rundlauf the the excelsior and the under promotion and uh, on top of that the excelsior is shown in two ways in in two different promotion the promotion of a queen the queening and the under promotion of an eye. So what else can you hope for? Uh, I mean, uh, quite uh, sufficient content is involved. Uh, and of course, the great battle between the bishop and the rook uh, and, the, and the weak pawns. Uh, and uh, also the, the kings, both kings have a, a big role. So uh, if uh, all this has been achieved, I should, I and my partner, uh, felt quite satisfied with the outcome. Were you expecting that it's going to be or it should be in the top three? Uh, you can never tell because I, I had no idea what the others were. And uh, I, I, only, I only wanted to, to be included in the award somewhere, even if a commendation or an honorable mention, which... Uh, which is already an honor to in such a, a great company in memory of such a great composer to be in the award and not uh, be uh, forgotten outside the award. Uh, the third prize was a very pleasant su surprise for us. Well, what I can say is that I'm, uh, I'm very happy that there were so many great composers taking part in this competition, including yourself that those studies i feel that i have to share it with others this is why we are doing this series also to make people understand better the studies understand why they are great what pleasure it can give and to understand more the nuances the details the perfection of chess the art of chess and uh, so that there are so many uh, ideas still to be discovered and I do hope that you and your partner uh, will uh, still do in the next few years and the years to come and I hope you're going to be taking part in our future events if we're going to be organizing so thank you very much and congratulations and thank you very much and thanks to all uh, spectators as well Thank you very much for watching us and solve studies and compose studies. See you later.